we are witnesses of these things. The conclusion of our Holy Gospel today brings us this word, witness, and we heard it twice. We heard it from Jesus, of course, who tells us that we are witnesses of all of these things, that the scriptures have been fulfilled, the promises of God have come to fruition. And St. Peter, in his homily, his first homily after uh, Pentecost, he's telling the Jewish people, right, that you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. So they were eyewitnesses of this incredible event of the crucifixion and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. What does this matter? Well, it's the why. A lot of times we come to Mass, a lot of times we say we're Catholic, a lot of times we engage in the different events, Divine Mercy Sunday being last Sunday, we engage in them kind of in a perfunctory way, just kind of casually. But really, it's the motivation. Jesus Christ is the motivation in our lives. And he's not just some nice idea. He's not just some moral code. But he has given us himself. He has given us access to the Father. We are witnesses. Now you can ask, what is a witness, right? Is it somebody who sees uh, on their Facebook app that there's a sale going on at Meijer and I'm gonna go and buy something because it's buy one, get one free. I'm a witness of that and I tell all my friends that you can go buy one, get one free or you're going to Marty and Liz because they're having a half price sale. No, Wit somebody who witnesses something, somebody who is a witness, they see, they recall and they tell. So they see this event, this thing, whatever it is, they see it for the depth of that thing, of that event. They see it, not with indifference, but they've seen and let themselves be involved in the event. They also recall that event. It's ever in their mind. They continue to go back over it, not just to reconstruct what happened, but because the facts actually spoke to them. The event has a profound meaning and it's moving them. Our recollection allows us to be moved by those memories. And then we tell people, we tell people not with coldness or detachment, but we are invested in being that witness, in telling others the greatness of that event. It's somebody who has allowed themselves to be challenged by the event and be converted. That's why Jesus leaves the, the apostles with those words, you are witnesses of these things. You have seen these things. You have recalled these things. And now you're, you're being empowered to tell everyone about it. And what's magnificent is the fact that Jesus doesn't just call those men, those disciples, but he calls all of us to live in this way, to be witnesses, because we too are beneficiaries. We too have received that beautiful grace from God. You have received it last week on Divine Mercy Sunday, a great grace from God, even receiving a plenary indulgence through the authority of the church. What a beautiful gift that is. But I wanna challenge you, I wanna ask you, why are you Catholic? Why are you Catholic? If your kids haven't asked you, their mom or dad, why are you Catholic? Why are we Catholic? And you haven't answered that question, I challenge you to ask it, to answer that question. Because something has moved you. Maybe it's fire insurance. I'm worried that I'm going to die and that, you know, maybe if I get close to Jesus now, I'll, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, he'll look with favor on me. Maybe, you know, punch my ticket every Sunday. I'll be good. That's not a good why. That's again casual. That's also empty. To be a witness of Jesus Christ, we are moved. 
we have encountered an event, a person. The risen Jesus comes to the apostles. He appears to them, moves them, and allows them to touch the wounds. Touch the wounds in his hand, his side. Do not be unbelieving, but believe. But the question for each one of us in our Easter journey and in our journey of faith is why am I Catholic and why am I staying Catholic? What moves me about the message of Jesus Christ, about that good news that makes me want to tell everybody about it? You know, sometimes on the mission band, I wasn't on for very long, but even encountering people at different times, they ask me, how can I talk about the faith? How can I you know, share it with my coworkers or my friends, or how do I keep my kids Catholic? Well, you have to be a witness. It's something that oozes out of you. It just comes out. It's just a joy that cannot be squelched. It cannot be stopped. It cannot, it just comes out. So my answer to those people is not that excited, you know, freak them out about Father Andy. I tell them, you have to be you. You have to be you. You have to be vulnerable. You have to be uh, excited. You have to be sad. You have to mourn. You have to be joyful. You have to encounter life with Jesus Christ as your rock and refuge. Because then you don't have to do anything. You're being you, who God has made you, and you can't help but tell others about him or love others with the love that he has given to you. You can't help but be merciful because you have received mercy in confession. Because you've received the Holy Eucharist, you are nourished by the body, blood, and soul and divinity of Jesus Christ. You can't help but tell other people who are starving and thirsty for the truth that this is where it's at. This is where I find it. This is where my heart is at peace, is at rest. And no matter how young or how old we are, that encounter with Jesus Christ, that's our starting point. That's what keeps our butts in the pews. That's what makes us get up in the morning. That's what makes us encounter a scary, war-torn, difficult world with peace, with joy with calmness, with readiness for what God is going to ask us to do. We are witnesses of these things. We have been transformed by Jesus Christ and the good news of the gospel. Pope Benedict said, the content of Christian witness is not a theory. It's not an ideology or a complex system of precepts and prohibitions or a moralist theory. It's a message of salvation, a real event, rather a person. It is the risen Christ, the living and only savior of all mankind. This, what, this is what made St. Peter speak with boldness. This is what made St. John the evangelist write his holy gospel so that others would come to know the Christ that he saw, that he is a witness of. This is the beauty of the saints is that each and every one of you is called to sanctify the world right where you are, right in your sphere of influence, to take the light of Christ to others, starting with your family, starting with your kids. So a lot of times people ask us, priests and religious, what's your vocation story? I wanna flip the script. Have you told your kids your vocation story? Have you told your grandkids why you're Catholic. Because they're not going to be Catholic just because grandpa and grandma are. They're not going to be Catholic just because mom and dad are. We've seen that. Track record's pretty bad. Unless they encounter a witness, unless they encounter somebody whose life has been moved and changed by Jesus Christ, we're not yet witnesses. We just information carriers. Don't be an information carrier. Don't be an app. Give yourself to Jesus. And it's not like an altar call. This is actually something that transforms you. 
This is something that motivates you. This is something that brings you the ultimate peace. And those are the first words Jesus says each time he appears to each of those disciples and witnesses. He says, peace. Peace be with you. Not as the world gives, but I give you my peace. My peace that lasts forever. Let us be those witnesses. Let us be people who are anchored to the rock of Jesus Christ and can't wait to tell everyone about what he has done in my life and in yours. That doesn't take much. It takes being you. It takes being united to Jesus. It started at your baptism, sealed at your confirmation. You continued to receive the mercy of God in confession. Now you're going to receive Holy Communion. Ask God that it will transform you. Transform you just like it did to our Blessed Mother. When she encountered God in her womb, everything changed. Life wasn't the same. And the whole world was changed.